the Storio 2 video series. In this lesson, we're going to go over the timeline module. In the previous lesson, we learned how to create an outline in the outline module. This is not required if you only want to use the timeline module in Storio. From the project screen, I'm going to select the time travel sample project. If you do not go to the timeline module automatically, select the timeline button on the toolbar. By the way, you can tell Storyo which module to go to when selecting a project in Preferences. Let's take a look at what we have here. The first thing you will see is a whole bunch of colored cards on a canvas. These cards are called sequences. And the colors do mean something. They are not random. So let me explain that. Every sequence is attached to a segment. The segment is the top level in the timeline. To see a list of all the segments for this timeline, select the Filter Timeline by Segment button. The first segment is called Jurassic Period. And if you look at the sequences, you will see one sequence with the same color. The next segment is Civil War. And again, there is one sequence on the canvas that is associated with that segment. The next one, however, Current Year, has one, two, three, four, five sequences on the timeline. So what does this mean? In this project, I have set up my segments as periods of time so I can quickly look at the sequence canvas and see what sequence takes place in a certain period of time. Notice the French Revolution has two sequences on the timeline. To edit a segment, click on the pencil button for that segment. You can change the segment name here. If you want to see the segment name in the row of segments, don't enter a long name for that segment. You can enter a longer description of that segment here in the description field. If you want, you can enter a unit of measurement for that segment. In this case, I entered a description in era of 65 million years ago. But in the Civil War segment, I entered a year, 1861. Here, you can change the color of that segment. If you do, you will be asked if you want that color to filter through down to all the sequences and index cards. If you click OK, notice that the segment color changes, as does the sequence color. Before I go on to the next topic, I want to show you how you can use segments and sequences in a different way. Select the Projects button, but before you can leave the Timeline module, you will be asked if you want to save the sort order of the sequences. I did not make any changes to the sort order yet, so I'm going to select Don't Save. Select Shakespeare's Hamlet. Let's take a look at how this timeline is constructed, as it is much different than the Time Travel Project. Let's look at our segments. Notice that instead of time, the segments are acts in the play, and each is color-coded to the related sequences. So, for example, the famous speech in Act 3, Scene 1, To Be or Not To Be, is indicated right here. Let's take a look at one more. Select the Projects button, and then select the Civil War. Here, each segment is simply a year from 1861 to 1865, chronicling the Civil War. If you click on a segment, you will filter the timeline to see just the sequences in that segment. 
In order to see all sequences for all segments in this project, select Sort Order Show All Years. And I will explain how to create sort orders in the next lesson. So, to wrap up, a quick review. A timeline is a collection of segments. You can have multiple segments. And a segment can be anything you want. A period of time, a year, a chapter, an act, etc. You can then attach sequences to each segment. In the next lesson, we are going to go over creating sequences in your timeline.